you, you mentioned him briefly, uh, Emmanuel Nusubuga, and you, it was about this shepherd type, shepherd type ministry, shepherd for all. And you see in a lot of, I mean, I hate to generalize Africa because it's a continent. Sure. Uh, Good, Julian. You got the first <laughs> question. <laughs> 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 I'm proud of you as a Creighton grad for no. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's true though because uh, post, especially with post post colonialism in the continent of Africa, you see tribal and interreligious conflict post colonialism really um, like um, exacerbated due to the nature of nationalism, mm. things like that. Right. So, it seems that he and Subuga was really influential because you, you saw that he was always, con he was working with all, if I'm remembering correctly, he's working with all, a lot of other religious communities as well. That's right. Uh, and to try to bridge that gap. So can you talk a little bit about the shep that, that shepherd ministry that uh, he was really big on and like what lessons we can take away from him? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I borrow the image of shepherds, obviously a major biblical image, both for God and for Jesus Christ. So that has a deep heritage in the Christian tradition, but it was also a term that Insubaga himself used to describe his ministry. And in his first public homily, really speech, he said, you know, I'll be a shepherd, not just for Catholics, but for you all. Uh, and I think he did. I mean, he was a Bugando, and Buganda is the biggest kingdom or province in Uganda. And definitely, I think it was seen in that way and probably had more influence within that region than some other parts of the country. Uh, but having said that, he, you know, he worked very hard, especially in Buganda, to bridge some of the religious divisions that had been very uh, divisive in Uganda's history, because as you might have seen, maybe uh, uh, when Ryan got you know, was getting overwhelmed, you know, some of that early history, you know, you yeah, see, the, uh, same. You know, there really was a lot of religious conflict. And I mean, an out, out and out conflict with the war in the 1890s, and then tension under colonialism. And so, you know, when Insubaga came, became an archbishop in 1966, it was only several years after independence. And, you know, these lines had also become very politicized, where you know, the Catholics basically had their own political party. The Anglicans in many ways had their own. The Muslims had their own movement. Uh, so steps he took, such as going to a mosque, right, and or going and preaching a homily in, an, in the Anglican cathedral. I mean, these are significant symbolic steps. Uh, collaborating with leaders such as Janani Luam, the famous Anglican martyr who Idi Amin killed, or with later Anglican Protestant and other Muslim leaders to speak out against the abuses of Abote's regime in the 1980s. I mean, they, I think these were all ways of trying to bring people together, you know, again, recognizing we don't all agree on all questions of doctrine, obviously, our histories may be different. But when it comes to basic questions of defending the common people against authoritarianism, uh, or trying to just emphasize what holds us together in a shared worship of God, uh, you know, that these things can can hold us together, even though we might still recognize the differences. And and I think it's Subiga's manner. I mean, from what I learned interviewing people was just, you know, he just he had a kind of joy with people. He just enjoyed being around people, no matter what background they came from. And I, I think that personal style also uh, came off just again, similar to Pope Francis. I mean, it's his statements make an impact, but a lot of what I think shapes people is just how Pope Francis comports himself and this idea that he's not, he doesn't try to stand above people. He, you know, he's, he's down to earth, he's humble. Uh, you know, all of those are important lessons for leaders that it's not just what you say, uh, but how you comport, how you comport yourself, how you live your life. That's what people really uh, remember.